and welcome to my channel it's rebecca also known as four kids at one four seven and i'm ready to prep my next diamond painting so the one, next one i'm going to do is this eye which is black and white um, and has 21 colors so what i'm going to do is i'm going to get myself prepared so i'm using this 28 sort of holder tray uh, and I have labelled each of the containers with their corresponding DMC number which is what I tend to work towards so um, you get familiarity as you're going through a diamond painting with what symbol each is, equals what colour um, but because I used to be a cross stitch on the DMC colour I'm used to referencing this I just always do it so more often than not I'll use this inventory sheet rather than the key that's on the canvas but again that's just my sort of personal preference so what we're going to do is we're going to get this both the canvas prepped and also the drills prepped ready for this one so um first things first and um, you know let's get some drills into the right places um, so let's start with some of the easy ones. So 3865, which is this one that I have 37 of. Um, I know full well I'm going to be putting a few in my keep spare bag. I'm going to put three in for now. Um, these holders can fit four. Uh, however, I tend to prefer it with three. And to be honest, once I have use this container up i'm not likely to put three straight back in it i'm likely to just get out a bag and just do that symbol until the bag runs out um and i'll tend to use this just to pop whatever's left so i'm actually using a very big pair of scissors so let's make this a smaller pair so you can rip these bags i tend to prefer to just cut them but that's me um, this also gives me a chance to check if any of the drills have any problems with static or being oily. Should that happen, it's nice to know when you prep it. And then if that's the case, you just include washing them or adding a, a tumble dryer sheet as part of your preparation. So that's three bags. I mean, it could possibly fit four, if, if you can sort of see the little edge to the side but to me that is full enough so we'll get that one done and um, we'll also get this other one 3756 which I've got eight now the only reason it gets a bit trickier for me as the numbers go on is only because of the like the way I like to store my spare drills so I have probably talked through this on pretty much all of my videos that I've put diamonds into these tubs but for anybody who's not seen those before um, I tend to store my spare drills in little square bags however if I can keep them in these bags I prefer that um, it's just my way of being able to know roughly how many of them I've got so what I'll now do just to again make things easier is anything that I only have the one of I know full well I'm going to have to open that bag so let's just get the single ones tipped into their relevant bags because I've just unboxed this diamond painting I do know that there's none um, that sort of that they're all in a strip, they're all together um, for every colour. So if I only have one, then that, I definitely only have one. It's not, it doesn't team up with one of the others. Is that even in English? <laughs> Sometimes I don't even know if I make sense to myself. Um, but yeah, if you watch my unboxing and my inventory of this, you'll see that I don't ever have like two separate bags of the same colour or anything like that. So we've got some dark brown, 3371. So yeah, also if you've not seen my other videos, these are a series of three that I'm doing 
30 by 30 for my scrap room, which I will be scrapbooking again at some point. I need to sort of find some time to come in and just sort of start playing and then I'm sure I'll be getting more scrapbooking done as the bug bites me again. It's a hobby I've had for many, many years and every now and then it just takes the back seat for a short time. Okay, so that is um, all the single bags done. Now I do have another one here that I have a few extras. Uh, sorry, more than more than four, let's say. So this is the 5200, which is white. Thought we were going to have a problem with that one being oily, but nope. It was just the way it was sat in the bag. I like to cut the ends off just because I find they tip into the container a little bit nicer. And that's the last one of those. So that again is three bags. All my spares are just going into my little A5 bag that I keep hold on. So now this is when we get to ones that have got twos or threes. This is where I sort of make a decision by the colour. So there is 200 in each bag, um, though there may be a little bit more. So if the quantity that I need, so this is the separate number that's next to it. So here we go, we've got three here is 471. Okay, so on the bags that's got three, so say each bag had a bit more than 200 in, say it even had 225, if I only needed 450, then there's a chance I might not need to open this third bag. So therefore, I'd only put two in. So that's how I'm going to work it. If the quantity says more than 450, then I'm going to put all three bags in. If it's less than 450, but of course more than 400, which is why I've got three bags, then I'm just going to keep one bag spare so that if it comes to the end when I've done the diamond painting, I may have that one left. That's the way I think I'm going to work it. So for 310, 471 so that is more than 450 which is sort of an extra 25 diamonds over what's expected so I'm going to put all three of these in watch me end up putting all three of them in and every time anyway <laughs> isn't that the way things work try not to look at the numbers in advance and spoil it for myself so that's 310 so we've got 3072. So this one is, okay, we have got another example. So this one, I need 440. So if there was 225 in each bag, I wouldn't need the extra bag. So what I'm gonna do for this one is only put two in and I'm gonna pop that bag in my spares. I may need a couple out of it, I may not. I also don't know if the inventory sheet is the exact number of diamonds that that diamond painter needs or whether there's a little bit of a buffer in the inventory sheet. I don't know how this company works. So 762, 504, that means I'm going to put all three bags in, including, we've got a little, little rogue purple one in there. Can we see it? Don't know if it's going to focus, but you can see the purple floating. I'm sure that will... Uh, rear its head in my tray when I'm painting at some point. So we'll put all three of these in because I'm likely to need them all. So that's that one done. And then we've got 3743 which I need 550. So again I am more than likely to need to at least open up with the third bag. So I'm gonna do it now. I really don't mind when I'm working on these canvases, actually opening up the bags as I go. It's like a little mini accomplishment to have used all the ones in the pot, but 
that's those three. Got myself a right little cluster of bags over here. Okay, so with the twos, we'll work along the same lines. 250, uh, sorry, if I go for there being 225 in each bag, um, if I need diamonds more than 225, I'll open both. If I don't, I'll only open one. So 3799 is 350. There is not likely to be an extra 150 diamonds in the one bag that has approximately 200. So we are going to need both. So that's that one. Get myself all looking for all these bags now. Okay, 939. 287. So again, you're not likely to have an extra 87 than what you should have approximately. So I'm going to put both bags in there. While we're here, we've got a gap here with 3042. And for that, we should have 313. So again, in both go. And this is just my preferred way of storing them when I'm done with a painting. Affects the way that I put them into my tubs. If you either don't keep your spare diamonds or if you're really not bothered if they end up in bags, then by all means, tip them all in. <laughs> tip as many in as you can. Okay, so 413, I only need 210. So I'm going to keep that spare bag just in case I already do have 10 extra. And for 414, I need 290. So for that one, I'm going to put those bags in. That's that one. And then we've only got two more left. So for 169, I need 223. So for this one, I am going to pop a spare bag away, going on the basis of possibly being 225 bags in there and for 317 now this one is 227 <laughs> so from my guideline I would put two in however we're only talking two diamonds so I'm going to err on the side of caution and put one bag in and put one in my spares it's not like I have loads and loads of spares it's mainly one colour so, we move that out of the way. So that is my rubbish to deal with later. That is my diamonds boxed up and ready. We've got all those colours in this black and white eye. So I'm going to pop my inventory sheet in there. In fact, no, I'm not. I'm going to package it up ready to actually do the diamond painting, how I store it. Um, in fact, let's do that first. So, this is my little tub. Uh, it's quite little, but it's a fluff. It is a little basket, one of those small baskets. It's from Home Bargains, it was 89p. And this is what holds sort of my tools, my current project, everything sort of, but the canvas and the light pad, and of course my table. So I have a couple of clips, which I tend to use to sort of clip the canvas onto the light pad, especially if it's a little bit bigger than my small table. It tends to sort of keep it in place. I don't think I'll need it with this painting due to it only being a 30 by 30, so I'll pop them back in here. This is my toolbox. So I have a little tray for catching the rubbish and then I'll bin that. I have my scissors, my diamond painting pen, have a little pot that I've popped some wax in, still using the same one. Use that to refill my pen. I have some washi tape, which we're going to use in a minute. I do have a portable charger in case the light pad, if I go somewhere else and don't want it to reach all the way, um, I haven't got access to a plug, I tend to take this. And then I have a pen and one of the nice sets of tweezers from ever moment so that's sort of my little toolbox i mainly use the scissors if i'm opening the pouches i mainly just get these two out to start off with 
but what we're going to do now oh sorry and as well <laughs> i have um ah that's where my extra sticker sheets went that i couldn't find a few videos ago i'll put them back in there right home um i have some sheets of top cover paper that have come off other diamond paintings they're more used if i'm pulling off a big section i feel like i want to section a bit off so i can leave sort of handy to have a few of those about and then i have my big tray i tend to use a big tray for diamond painting so i have my big tray um and then i will then put in here um both my spare bag spare drills i'll pop my inventory sheet in ready to grab because i referenced that and i'll put the diamonds in so they'll sort of sit up like that and then my toolkit will sit like that and this is what i get out so that's how i do it um partly the reason for that as well is that i um put this tub away in a cupboard just pop this tub in a cupboard keeps things sort of from cluttering up the front room should we say but before we get this packed away fully let's do a little bit of prep on the canvas itself so i don't always do this right at the beginning but we're going to today so one of the first things i need to do is get rid of this excess glue around the edges now there are a couple of ways that people will do this um, I think I might actually hmm, shall I try one of the ways should we try one I'm trying to see if I have a metal ruler that doesn't have cork on the back or some sort of foam and I don't so we'll use this one but the other way up so some people will put down the likes of a metal ruler and I'm only really doing this because I'm on a small one and um, they will get a craft knife of some sort let's just try your bog standard and they will score through the tape and hopefully not through the canvas so you do need to have quite a light touch I don't feel as I'm cutting all the way through the canvas, so hopefully I'm not. We'll see if I'm actually cutting through the glue or not in a moment. And then peel up my little ruler. And then they're actually able to sort of pull up the glue, sort of get it rolled up. Because it is, in effect, double-sided tape. Let me zoom in and see if we can get this so you can see it okay very zoomed in on an eye now aren't we here we go so we're sort of rolling this up on itself and pulling and you could just keep rolling it up on itself but to be honest this is just pulling up oh he actually likes this idea okay maybe we're not doing the washi tape Maybe we'll just do it across the bottom. This is going to be much tidier. There we go. So all it is, if, oh, I'm trying to get you to see that I'm so zoomed in. That is just double sided tape. And that camera is not focused. Okay, come on camera. There we go. That is just double sided tape. So very sticky double-sided tape but it's double-sided tape so let's zoom back out again oh one way let's zoom you guys back out again so that is now clear as daisies okay i'm liking that and if i push that back down because we've used a ruler as well that's straight as anything and if we look at the back i've not gone through the canvas so if you're very heavy handed or unsure, then stick to the washi tape method that I'll show you in a minute. But if you've, you can do it sort of light touch and if it's not enough, you can always do it again. Then I'm liking this idea. So taking the time to make sure it's as 
straight as it can be but I am leaving you know a very very thin white border having said that it's thicker up here at the moment very very thin white line and I'm just going from just above which also helps me with the amount of pressure and I'm just gonna lightly run it down Ooh, I might have actually missed a bit lightly run it down the edge of the metal ruler let's cover that up safety wise and then ugh, pull the ruler off and then I'm just going to use the edge to sort of use my fingernail just to sort of pull it up and ruffle it up a little bit let me see if I can get might be easier to bring it up to you so you can see I've sort of ruffled up the corner a little bit there and then we get to the point where I can get hold of it which this one is not working this oh no we're going and you can just keep rolling it up on itself but if you can get hold of it it's quite tough stuff so you can just keep pulling so I'm just pulling that all the way if I meet resistance I've probably not cut through and there we go I like it okay so that's another batch of double sided tape so what we will use the washi tape for just to show you for another example is at the bottom here I do have a lip of washi at the bottom not washi sorry uh, I have a, a little ridge of glue at the bottom but it sort of goes to there so if you can see it's probably a few millimeters quarter of an inch maybe but not much more than that so I'm not sure how that will fare cutting it so what we'll do is we'll just put washi on it but first I'm going to change my battery in my camera before I lose you all okay back with a fresh battery so what I'm going to do for this one is I am just going to do a strip of washi across the bottom now you can get washi in varying thicknesses or widths um, I am using one that is wider quite often than the edge of my canvas um, but that's just because I have so much of this roll <laughs> I have loads um, so that's the reason I've sort of decided to stick with it um, but you of course can get a washi that is right for you um, and I'm going to use my big scissors for this one I'm just sort of going across the edge line if I do happen to take a little bit of the canvas off it's not that bad I'm half cutting canvas half cutting washi here but I'm cutting across the line it straightens it up so there we go so that is that part of the canvas prepped we've got no glue down this side I mean you can especially see it here it's not sticking to anything but we have glue where the diamonds are so let's tidy that up and get my scissors out of the way those go back in the diamond painting so does that and um, so the next thing I'm going to do is trim this contact sheet down so it's manageable so the way I do this and I do have a short video on this as well is I like to sort of go halfway and I'm not too fussed if this lines up across a line at the top um, you can again use the sort of straight line and the and the um, sharp knife for this in fact maybe that's what we'll do this time see like I keep changing my mind no let's do a bit of both so one of the easy ways to do this is just to sort of get yourself a line and then pull it up halfway this way and just use a pair of scissors so this is quite often what I do when I am in the front room so 
I'll quite often do the boxing up of the diamonds on video for you guys and then I'll go into the front room and then it'll be like, oh, I need to get my canvas ready. Um, so quite often I will just do it this way. It is so easy with a pair of scissors. I do half and then half, which just stops the whole um, contact sheet of paper coming off the diamond painting completely because that can be a lot harder to get back on. And then that just gives me now two pieces rather than one, quite simply. Um, but on this, I do tend to like to do it in a four. I've just got some air bubbles between it. So what we'll do for this one then is we will try just cutting it. So if we go, there is about, about right. Let's give this a go. So I can, I can hear it cutting through the contact paper. Again, I'm probably doing it just as lightly as I did with the double siding. Let's see how that works. Ooh. Oh no, see look, I've not quite done it enough there. And it means I'm actually ripping. In fact, let me show you before I fix it. I'm actually ripping the paper because I've not quite caught it hard enough. So if you can trust your pressure skills all the way across it, then this might be the way for you. But if not, you could end up with bits that stick to your canvas. However, I do like how straight that line is. Maybe let's give it another go and see if I can be a little bit better at it. Maybe it's practice makes perfect. Just trying to find that little bit that ran over the length of my ruler because that doesn't need to be straight. Okay, so there's only one little bit that I didn't do quite as well. So let's give the other half of it a go. So if we go to about here. And all you need to do is get to the point where you can hear that you're cutting through something. If you cut through the glue, then that's fine because the glue is still gonna be there and that's what you need for the diamond. You just don't wanna cut that hard that you go through the canvas. So let's see how I did on this one. Let's do it slowly. Oh, nice. Let's put that down. I might be a converted, I might have to prep all of my canvases in my craft room. <laughs> Those lines are nice. Okay, so to show you what it looks like underneath the join, can you see there we've got a join? Can you see where it's gone? Nope. I've not cut hard enough to go through the glue. It's still as shiny as it ever was, but I've cut enough to give myself two pieces. So this would be a nice way to do it. Maybe I will. If you wanted to sort of give yourself different sections and maybe work on a on a pattern in random spots that then meet up in the middle. No, that wouldn't work for the way my brain works when I diamond paint. But I do like the way that that join looks as though it's been done. Let me see if I can fold it so you can actually see where it is. Whereas my join with scissors is, of course, not as neat and as straight. But they both work for the sake of separating the paper. Um, as does the washi tape works, as well as trimming the glue off the side. Though I am really liking the trimming the glue off the side. So that's my canvas, my um, canvas prepped for the sake of diamond painting. When I do start, what I will do is I'll fold this back to about halfway and score it. I will then push this back. I will fold it back again into the middle. So a bit like the segments that we've done this way, this is the way I like to work on a 30 by 30. Um, do what works for you. I will then do that square. 
So that will be the square that I'll work on in the sitting. And if I don't get to finish it, I'll just push that back over and let it stick to whatever's there. If you are somebody that prefers to work in a smaller section maybe, and to do the complete section, then you can always cut your paper to match how you work. Um, it's completely up to you. But I will probably peel back a few of these and have a look. And I tend to do the uninteresting parts first, because then as I move, so I'll probably start this one at the bottom because we've got a lot of whites. Um, but then as I move up, I will start to get a little bit more interest. And then even when I get to the top section, there's still some interest up there. I don't want to necessarily work from the top and do all of those and then be left with this to do at the bottom. It's not as exciting. So that's my thoughts anyway. So there's my canvas, my ruler stays in my craft room. I have my tub of which I will, it's, it's getting very sort of a bit like a game of Tetris in here at the moment to fit everything in. So I might have to take that power bar out um, or maybe take that little tray out. I didn't have the um, clips in there because the last painting I was working on was a big one. So I haven't had them stored in there. So let's take the power bar out. Um, and that is my go-to diamond painting tools with my diamonds, with my sheet, with my spares and with my little strips in case I uh, peel back one of these and actually find I want to be working up here, then I might just put a piece of paper over it. And that's it, that's me ready to go, quite compact, will fit in a cupboard when I'm not using it. And it's time to diamond bake. So thank you so much for joining me and I'll speak to you all again soon.